All right, so today what we'll be doing is we'll be looking at the vertebral column, and so these are basically the vertebrae that run uh, from your neck all the way down to what we'll call the uh, coccyx. And these are going to be attachment points for uh, ribs, uh, certainly the pectoral girdle, and then also the pelvic bones as well. Uh, so essentially, if we look at the verbal column as a whole, we have seven uh, cervical vertebrae, and you'll notice these are in the neck. Um, the first two are going to have special names, and we'll talk about those uh, later. And you'll notice there's this curvature um, actually in the cervical uh, verbal column, and that basically develops as the baby learns to hold its head up. So, uh, so you're not born with that curvature. Uh, then we have uh, 12 thoracic vertebrae, which are attached to each of the pairs of ribs. And you'll notice this curvature you actually are born with. And then you've got five lumbar vertebrae, which has their own curvature that develops as you learn to basically stand up and even walk. And then finally, we have the sacrum and then the coccyx. So we'll sort of go over each of these different types of vertebrae uh, separately. But before we do, other uh, aspects of the entire vertebral column that you can see are the discs that separate the vertebral column. And these are going to act as uh, basically shock absorbers. They are made up of especially a, um, an outer core of fibrocartilage and sort of an inner core that's more gelatinous than anything else. And the major uh, purpose of this is there's a lot of weight bearing down on them, so they're really going to help uh, absorb the compressional forces uh, just from holding your body upright. Now, these can, over time, weaken, and actually uh, the inner core or the inner jelly core can actually kind of poke um, into the fibrocartilage and actually create what is called a slit disc. And uh, that, depending on the extent of that, that can actually press on nerves and can actually be quite painful. And some people have to have surgery for those. Um, another feature you can see in this entire verbal column is the uh, intervertebral foramen. Now, do not mix this up with another foramen that we'll talk about. Uh, a little bit later on, but this is where basically the spinal nerves are coming out of the spinal cord. And so that's a look at the entire vertebral column as a whole. Now, looking at some of these individual uh, vertebrae, uh, what we'll notice is w uh, it's important for you to especially be able to distinguish between um, three different types of vertebrae. The cervical vertebrae, which I'll hold one up here, uh, thoracic, and lumbar. Now, the sacrum and the coccyx, most people don't usually mix those up with anything else. They're fairly distinctive. But we'll start off by talking about the cervical vertebrae. Uh, the first two uh, cervical vertebrae, as I mentioned earlier, uh, had special names. The first one is called the atlas. Um, Atlas um, was basically a mythological hero who had to hold the world up on his shoulders, which basically, uh, the skull, it, it's literally holding the skull up, so it's kind of appropriate for this. Uh, if you kind of look at the Atlas and compare it to some other um, vertebrae, uh, some things that you'll notice about it is it's got a much wider hole here called the vertebral foramen. And this is uh, basically where the spinal cord is passing through the vertebrae. Um, and if you compare it to this cervical vertebrae here, you'll notice that it is also distinctly missing this structure here that we call the body of the vertebrae. So that's certainly one way to distinguish the atlas from other vertebrae is the fact that it has no um, body. Now, the body is basically going to be the main support, so certainly you don't want the uh, atlas to support a lot of weight. Um, some other structures you do see on the atlas, and you would see for all cervical vertebrae, is you would see this opening right in here. This is called the transverse foramen. And the transverse foramen is going to be where um, an artery, and a vein actually, called the vertebral arteries and veins are actually going to run through. And these are 
Um, the vertebral artery, in particular, is going to supply blood to the brain. Um, it's actually one of two arteries that does so. Um, so that's the atlas. Uh, the axis is also is the second cervical vertebrae, and just like any of the other cervical vertebrae, it itself has a um, transverse foramen, and for once again for the same reason. So all of the cervical vertebrae are going to have these transverse foramen. So if you want to distinguish that from the thoracic and lumbar, look for it. It's a dead giveaway. Um, some other, so the main unique feature of the axis is this structure here called the DENS or the untoid process. Uh, DENS is certainly a lot easier to spell, probably a lot easier to remember. Um, but the main thing about this DENS is it actually is going to articulate with or the uh, atlas and this is what allows us to basically shake our head no, okay? is the rotation basically between the atlas and the axis. This vertebrae over here is a, just a, another type of cervical vertebrae and on actual tests, we're not going to actually ask you to note if this was the fifth cervical vertebrae or the third one or the seventh one, just as long as you recognize it as a cervical vertebrae. Some other features uh, that I haven't previously pointed out, I have pointed out the body, have pointed out the vertebral foramen, the transverse foramen, and once again that is distinctive to the cervical vertebrae. Um, two other features that you can notice here is coming, in, um, actually the, the way that this uh, vertebrae is oriented is um, like this, so this would be basically the anterior and this is the posterior. So really on the posterior side of the vertebral column, what you're going to be looking at is two bony structures here called the lamina that fuse together to create the spinous process, which you could easily feel the spinous processes by feeling the processes in basically your backbone. Uh, look, uh, continuing uh, down the vertebral column, we have the thoracic vertebrae. And if you look at the thoracic vertebrae, it's named for the fact that the ribs are attached to it, which are part of the thoracic cavity. Um, just like the cervical, it has a vertebral body. Um, it has lamina, uh, spinous processes, and two other structures that I forgot to point out, but are the transverse processes, which are basically coming off in a horizontal direction. It does have a vertebral form, and, but if you look at this, uh, you'll notice it's kind of round shaped. And this is one way you could, you could distinguish the thoracic vertebrae from basically the lumbar vertebrae. And another thing, especially if you're looking at it from a superior position, is you'll notice that the vertebral body kind of looks like the shape of a heart. And since the heart actually is in the thoracic cavity, then that is another way that you can remember that this vertebrae is a thoracic uh, vertebrae. Um, then we have over here a lumbar vertebrae, and one of the things you'll notice is it has a very wide uh, vertebral body. Do you, can you guess why it would have a wide vertebral body? Yep, that's right, because of the weight, increased weight that it has to um, basically, ha it has on it. Um, it has similar features as other vertebrae. It has your transverse processes. It has the lamina, the spinous processes. Um, and, but if you look at the shape of the verbal foramen, then you'll notice that it's triangular shaped. And so that's one way that you can uh, distinguish this from, say, a um, thoracic vertebrae. And if you kind of look at this, actually, um, from above, it almost, the body almost looks like a kidney bean. And uh, the kidneys, if you know where the kidneys are, they are actually in the lumbar area. So that might be another way to help you remember that. Um, the other thing I like to think about is it, it reminds me of a moose's horns, if you kind of look at it from the side, and it has these processes kind of sticking up there and then out, so it always reminds me of those big moose that you would see. Um, continuing on down past the lumbar, 
you have the sacrum. Now the sacrum actually is considered to be five fused vertebrae. Uh, it is going to interact with the pelvis okay, to form what's called the sacroiliac joint. Um, the main body of the sacrum is right here and you'll notice there are these tiny little holes in the sacrum called the sacral for foramina and these are going to contain basically some nerves. And then at the very tip is uh, the very end of the vertebrae is the coccyx. Uh, sometimes uh, it's considered uh, like a tail-like structure. Oops. A tail-like structure. And it's about three to four fused vertebrae. And that is basically an overview of the verbal column.